the power is not just in the receiving, but it's also in the application. The Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 to 17, it said, from the days of thy youth, said thou hast known the holy scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation. And he went further to say all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. And they are profitable. So scriptures are profitable. When you interact with the word of God, you derive profit. But there is a protocol for accessing the profit that is in scripture. And he said one is doctrine. The other is your response to reproof, to corrections, and to instructions in righteousness. He said when this is done, you don't just profit. He said you are perfected. You are empowered unto every good works. Paul speaking to his son Timothy in second, first Timothy 4 from verse 13. He said until I come, give attendance to reading to exhortation and to doctrine. In verse 15, he said, Give thyself wholly to these things, that thy profiting will be made manifest to all. And so when you find Christians who are not profiting, it's either because they've not understood the word of God, or because they've not given themselves to putting the word to work. Every time the word is understood and applied, profit is a must. And I believe this morning, as we receive the word of God and apply it, there will be definite profit in our lives in the name of Jesus. This morning, I'll be sharing with us very briefly on the power of fasting. Maybe we call it part two. Because we did part of it in the first service. Um, I'll take out 10 minutes to do a quick recap. I know some persons were here for the first service, but many, many more persons are here for the second service. And so just to give foundation to what we are doing, the first thing we looked at was why we must fast as a part of our Christian experience. And I advanced three reasons. Number one, I said God himself calls for fasting. In Joel chapter 2, verse 12, the Bible said, Therefore, also now, saith the Lord, is it turn ye even unto me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. And so if God is the one inviting us to fast, then it's not just something we must do, but it's something we must do with the whole of our hearts. Because God is not a joker. He says what he means, and he means what he says. And he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of good and not of what? They are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. And so every time God thinks about you and invites you to partake in a thing, there is a future that is in it for you. Fasting is one of it. Number two, I said maturity necessitates that we fast. If we want to become mature believers, if we want to grow in the things of God, then fasting for us is a must. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 17, he say, Woe unto your city, if your prince is a child and eats for pleasure and not for strength. And so when a man grows, he has control over his appetite. He eats for strength. He doesn't just eat for the pleasure of it, and he also knows when not to eat in order to build capacity for kingdom engagement. The third reason I said necessitates for fast is the fact that every man who is committed to kingdom assignment and who is granted authority must be tested. And one area every believer is tested in is in the area of our appetites. The first specimen God presented in the Garden of Eden was tested and the test was in the area of appetite. An apple was presented, eat, you'll become as wise as God. 
and he said the man looked at it and saw that it, it was pleasant for food and he desired to eat of it even Jesus the son of God was tested if you are the son of God turn these stones to bread why did he say that number one he said Jesus was hungry in Matthew chapter 4 verse 2 he fasted for 40 days and afterwards he was unhungered and the devil came to him and said turn these stones to bread and number two he perceived that Jesus would want to prove a point in case there is pride in his spirit to demonstrate power just to validate himself but because he subjected himself to fasting which is an act of spiritual maturity he could decipher the will of God and align himself to the will of God Paul speaking in 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 verse 5 when he was giving us his credentials as a mature apostle handling the oracles of God he said he endured stripes imprisonment turmoil labor watching and fasting so Paul fasted and fasted very often and so if a Christian does not commit himself to fasting in the days of trial he will discover his strength is little and the Bible said if you faint in the day of trouble it's not because your God is not strong it's actually because your strength is little I prophesy over someone this morning your capacity is not just enlarged but you will stand the test of time even in your walk with God in Jesus precious name hallelujah now having said that we also went further to define the concept of fasting and I said fasting is simply an act of withdrawing your desire in order to seek the face of God and I said this is important for two reasons number one if you are able to suspend your desire or your desires it shows that you have developed capacity to master your appetite and if a man does not have capacity over his appetite kingdom cannot be committed to him in fact one of the things that define a child is the fact that a child is ruled by his appetite this is why when children are referred to in scripture most times you talk about forgiveness because they will always err they go in the direction of their appetite I write unto you children because your sins are forgiven you for his namesake when he came to sons he didn't talk about sins he said I write unto you young men because you are strong the word of the Lord abides in you you have overcome the evil one when he wrote to fathers he didn't talk about sin I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning these ones are able to tame their appetite and focus on priorities and then number two thing that makes that statement important is the fact that you have the capacity to make God your priority and so when you suspend your desires and focus on God is a testimony in the spirit that for you God is the most important aspect of your life so when a man does not fast he's also making a statement he's making a statement that he has no power over his appetite and he's also making a statement that God is not his first priority so fasting is an act an act that includes or involves separating your desires in order to make God priority now in doing this four things stand out number one I said you must turn to the Lord because there are many persons who separate their desires but they replace it with another desire and so because they are not eating from 6 to 3 p.m. they are watching a movie or they are going to visit a friend and they chat until time is exhausted it's not about the time it's actually about focusing on God the scripture we read in Joel chapter 2 verse 12 it says to turn to God with all your heart in fasting and so if you have not turned to the Lord then what you are doing is actually a, an, an activity that has no power in the spirit because every time a man fasts his focus his attention his consciousness must be directed to God number two when a man fasts, I said he must be predisposed to carrying out benevolent and just act because fasting is not just about waiting upon the Lord because when you wait upon the Lord God impacts on your character he impacts on your belief system he impacts on your priorities and one of the ways it, your priorities are demonstrated is in your relationship with others and so Isaiah 58 verse 6 God was asking them a question he said this fast that you are embarking upon is it just about wearing sackcloth 
pouring ashes on your head. He said, how come you have not made it easy for those who are bearing yokes? How come you have not been, been favorably disposed to those that you interact with every day? And so fasting is actually a time of dealing with humans, demonstrating the love and the compassion of God. You can't be lifting up your hands and say you're on 21 days fast when the nanny in your house does not have food to eat. Your children eat, even the leftover, the nanny is not qualified for it. You are not a Christian, you are a hypocrite. You can't claim that you are fasting for 40 days and then you show up and all your staff, you can't even pay them what is due to them. You take their money, you say you are doing an investment. And what you are paying them is so little and inconsequential. Yet, you are not troubled. You are not bothered. When we fast, God draws our attention to the character of the spirit. Number three, I said fasting is a time of humbling ourselves. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3, it says he suffered them to hunger that he may humble them. And so every time a man fasts, it provokes hunger. Fasting provokes humility. I beg your pardon. When people don't fast, more, many times they're behind-minded because they're still powered by their strength, their natural ability. When you subject yourself to fasting, apart from the fact that it has a natural impact on your physical being, it also gives God the opportunity to begin to address the tendencies and the propensities of the flesh. So fasting humbles us. Psalm 35 verse 13, the psalmist said, I humbled my soul in fasting. When you fast, you humble your soul. Now, when you begin to do this, which is actually the accurate way to do it, there is a power that is engendered. And that power, I said, is the reward of fasting. And the first one we looked at in the first service is what we call called divine favor. When a man begins to fast, he begins to release a power called favor. We looked at a story in Esther chapter 4 verse 16. Israel was being threatened. The whole tribe was to be annihilated. And this verdict came from the throne of the most powerful king in the then world. There was nothing they could do. And to make things worse, this manipulation was an act of a gang up in the corridor of power. So there's no way they can even access the king to change the matter. The only window they had was the queen. And even the man that came to talk to the queen was hoping she would use her natural powers, like her beauty and her proximity to the king. Go to the king, touch his head, and tell him about this matter. But you see, matters of state are not settled casually. It's a law that has been passed. And to make things worse, this lady does not even have the right to go into the king until she's summoned because it's against the law. But there was something Esther knew. In Esther chapter 4 verse 16, he said, take a three days fast for me. And he said, I will go into the king, which is against the law. He said, if I perish, I will perish. The reason is this. If God does not do something, if she enters there, she will perish. So she knew this was not a joke. If God does not intervene, she will perish. But she understood the potency and the efficacy of fasting. God of necessity must do something. And when she was done fasting, the Bible said in Esther chapter 5 verse 1, she walked into the court. <laughs> you know, I was telling them in the first service, there is beauty that is stronger than eyelashes. <laughs> Foundation and mascara is good. But there is a beauty that has more power than eyelashes. You can bob the whole eyelashes and use something. To, there is a beauty that is superior to a glowing skin. Your skin can shine like this bulb. There is a beauty that is more powerful. You can't change the heart of a king with your looks. He said the heart of the king is in the hands of God. He turned it. There is, to turn the heart of a king, you need something more than physical beauty. The king sees every damsel in the kingdom. And so Esther knew, I may be, I may be beautiful, I may have all the perfumery, I may have the best of garments, which is good. Please look beautiful, especially those of you who are married. But there is something beyond beauty. The Bible said when she walked in, the king looked at her and turned his staff. Come. And before she ever made a statement, 
That's what got me intoxicated. The king said to her, what do you want? Before she answered, the king said, anything you ask, I will give you. Before she asked, the king said, even if it is up to half of my kingdom, what power is this? What do you want? At least logic and reason demands that you wait if it's something you can do or if it's something you are willing to do. You didn't stop there. You tell her, you will answer, oh God. What is God? Are you under a spell? Yes, because favor is a spell. <laughs> favor is a spell. And instantly, a law was overturned. It's called the power of favor. How can a believer be stranded? We have too much advantage. We have too much advantage. We are not just tapping into it. It doesn't matter if 500 people applied. Yes, some studied in Harvard. Some studied in MIT. In addition to your certificate, come with favor. Come with favor. Come with favor. By the time they judge you based on merit, they will now go into an economy that is superior to merit. It's called favor. I said favor does three things. Number one, favor opens your heaven. Luke 135, the angel appeared to her and said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. You are favored among women. What caused the heaven to open was not her prayer. What caused the heaven to open was not her beauty. It was not even the fact that she was a virgin. There were many virgins in Israel, but you are highly favored. Because you are favored, an angel can be mobilized. And that was not a common angel. That was a cherubim. Such angels, they don't move carelessly. They stand before God. When he came to Zacharias, he said, I am Gabriel. That standeth before the throne of God. That's their designation. You don't send archangels. Archangels are participators in kingdom agenda because they are not just servants. They are rulers in the spirit. They are princes in Zion. The Bible said there are 12 chief princes. Gabriel is one of them. But on the strength of favor, it was not just an angel that was mobilized. It was a chief prince. This kind of angel, they can judge you even if God didn't tell them to. Because God didn't tell Gabriel to judge Zacharias. He said, me, I brought you a word and you doubt me, you will be dumb. That's a chief prince, but favor can mobilize them. Gabriel came into the world only three times in human history. They don't come anyhow. <laughs> Somebody's heaven is opening this morning. <laughs> the second thing favor does is wealth transfer. It said in Exodus 12 36, God gave favor to the Israelites. And they spoiled the Egyptians. They took the wealth of Egypt by favor. Thank God for marketing. Thank God for transactions. But there's something called favor. There's a level you get to. They say, Kai, this thing is worth 10 million. But we know you will struggle to do something. So take 20. And you are wondering, why? It's favor. It's favor. It will cost money. Money. There are people money look for. And trust me, you need a lot of money if you will prosecute the affairs of life. But favor is what makes for the possibility of wealth transfer. And finally, favor commands the allegiance of men. Not just men, but even kings. That a king will be willing to serve his own subject on account of favor. What do you want? It's only favor that will make a king ask you, what do you want to? Only favor makes that happen. And so when a man begins to fast beyond meeting a time and location, there's something he's generating. Why do we teach these things? To create a consciousness. Because the power of God moves in the direction of your consciousness. It's not about the 6 to 12, the 6 to 3. That time of separation, something is happening to you. And when you stand up, you can be rest assured that you're left with a power. And the first of that power is called favor number two power that fasting activates is the power to rule in the realms of spirits spirits control the affairs of life 
The earth realm is like a theater. It's like a screen in the spirit realm. The real operation does not happen here. It only manifests here. It's like the LED screen we are watching. These pictures you are seeing are a product of a, a very robust circuit system that projects the impulses that is transmitted through electric current. If you assume these pictures are big, my son, when phone, a phone starts ringing, he will rush because he's wondering, how did somebody's head enter this phone and he's talking? Because he assumes somebody's head is inside the phone. So he's checking to look at it's a complex manipulation. Everything happening on earth is orchestrated first in the realms of spirit. And so for a man to be a ruler in the natural world, he must be enthroned in the spirit realm. And one of the ways you enter the corridors of power in the spirit is by fasting. Jesus called his disciples in Luke chapter 10. And he told them, go, cast out demons. And they went on the strength of his word. And they cast out demons and returned. And they were celebrating. Even the devils were subject to us. <laughs> and Jesus didn't say anything. On another occasion, Jesus went to pray. And the same disciples went to cast out demons. And the demons will not go. And in Matthew 17, they came to ask him, why didn't the demon go? And Jesus told them, this kind, there is a this kind. He said, this kind goeth not, but by prayer and by fasting. There is a demon you will cast out because you have a revelation. There's another demon that will want to find out if there is a consecration backing this your revelation. Because if there's no consecration backing this revelation, you are a talker. And one of the consecrations that demons call in the spirit to find ranking men is fasting and prayer. That's why when they went to Paul, when they went to the sons of Sceva to cast out devils, the guy looked at them and said, Jesus we know and Paul we also know. Because in this corridor, it's not only Jesus that is known. A man who believes in Jesus and backs it up with consecration, his name also becomes a scepter in the spirit realm. Because there is a power that God allocates to his servants. He called us to co rule with him. But there are consecration that makes it happen. Even Jesus, the Son of God, walked in and out of the temple for 30 years. No demons saluted him. But the Bible said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, also in Luke 4 1. That he was driven to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And there he fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. In Luke 4, 14, when Jesus was returning, he said, and he returned in the power of the spirit. And his fame went abroad. And immediately he entered the synagogue. Demons began to scream. Why have you come here? The question is, is that the first day he came there? He has been going there for 30 years. What happened? Jesus needed to activate the power and he took fasting to activate it. In fact, in Matthew 4 15, he said, The land of Zabulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile. The people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. That death can continue in that family until somebody rises up. Because God can be your boat, but you will sink. There are things you need to do to awaken the power of God that is on your inside. And one of the things you do to stare the power is by fasting. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, it says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that is at work in your, on your inside. So if there's no power working on your inside, God will not be able to do. And the way you activate that power is to give yourself to prayer and fasting. Many Christians are wondering, God, where are you? He's on his throne because he's a king. <laughs> his location has never been in doubt. He has been on the throne before time began. And he will be on the throne when time ends. But there is a protocol that is designed around the workings of the operations of his spirit and of his kingdom. And that protocol is fasting. Many can never give themselves to consecration. They are saying if it will happen, it will happen. <laughs> that is one of the biggest deceptions of time. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Things are made to happen. If you don't know how to make things happen, it will never happen. Power. Power. Power to rule among spirits. Power to rule among demons. Many don't know 
what happens in their spirit they just leave their spirits porous and throw anything and everything there the physical reflects the spiritual have you not seen young people with a lot of flesh yet they are obese because they can't exercise their bodies you find a guy so large he can't carry a bucket of water so much flesh but no power put that guy in a gym let him lift irons for three months that flesh will be coupled it will be recoupled and that guy who was weak will suddenly come out and become a giant a macho man it's not about the flesh it's about the exercise so the power can be your spirit but it will be dormant every time we begin to fast we excavate power and suddenly you will discover that what you are looking for is not outside you it's inside you he said with joy shall ye draw out waters from the wells of salvation there is a power on your inside but it will take fasting to fetch it that's why demons mess up with people if you become volatile through fasting even the demons will advise themselves that this is not a place to be because fly only perch on cold food when you become hot there's an intelligence in the fly realm to know that if you perch here you are in trouble there are men that demons tell themselves don't go there if you even fly over that house there will be problem you will look, you will not walk for one month because they are too volatile they are volatile they are volatile paul said in fasting often i pray in tongues more than you all so they, they know him in the demonic realm if you get him angry there'll be challenge he knew how to walk power 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 every christian should rule among demons is our first in fact it's one of the signs that prove that we are christians he said these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils and so when christians begin to struggle with demons it means they've not touched power they've not touched what it takes to survive and to succeed in time and may god not, not make a demon know that you are successful to him demons are wicked creatures you must rule over demons you must dominate demons and you must subject them to do the will of god but it will take a lot of fasting for the revelation to come alive for the power to be stirred and if that doesn't happen you can't rule number three fasting it takes fasting to start a worthwhile adventure in this life if it's this life you want to do something that will be etched on the sand of time you want to do something that is global you want to do something that is eternal it will take a lot of fasting a lot of fasting in acts chapter 13 from verse 1 to 2 he said five men gathered in antioch he said they were teachers and prophets but they couldn't start a movement it's not a title that starts a movement it's a power it takes a lot of power he said they were there for two years nothing happened until suddenly he said they fasted and ministered to the lord and the holy ghost said separate unto me paul and barnabas for the work i have for them that company will remain in your spirit it will never manifest that book will remain in your spirit it will never be written any global and transgenerational venture you see in this life there is a dialogue in the spirit that makes it happen it has been there it will be there and it will never change the bible spoke about moses he had a burden to deliver israel but he couldn't in fact he thought it was about a strategy he began with the strategy of killing the egyptians when the vengeance of pharaoh rose up nobody told him he ran away for his life he ran into the wilderness without anybody advising him but the point came the bible said and moses went to horeb the mountains of god and at the back side of that mountain he saw a spirit and the spirit told him to go tell my pharaoh let my people go even though he met god he knew that there's something he needed to do on earth in order to release that power. And the Bible said Moses in Exodus 24 verse 18 fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights. When Moses began to engage the altar of fasting, he literally became a god. Until date, Moses cannot be forgotten. Do you know that when Paul was talking about the laws of God, he called it the loss of Moses. Moses had been immortalized. You can never forget him. When Jesus was about to go to do his own assignment, he took the appearance of Moses and Elijah. 
to tell him what he must do in Israel. How can a man become so much of an immortal? Because there are protocols on earth that when observed, put the badge of immortality on you. Even Jesus, the son of God, was on earth for 30 years. He could do nothing except as he fasted. He said Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The moment he returned, the movement began. There is a fast, you will fast and a vision will appear to you. There is a fast, you will fast, and the power to start that business will be released upon you. Men are not aware that there is a protocol in their spirit. How many die with potentials? It was my Moro that told the story where he went to the grave and God told him, this is the wealthiest part of the earth realm. The wealthiest part, he says, is not a good mind. Is where dreams are buried, books are buried, companies are buried, power for emancipation buried because men can pay prices. Prices. How can you leave this world and return to heaven with a vision in your spirit? How can you leave this world and return to heaven with the company that you feed 10 million people? Because you could not go on the altar of fasting for 21 days. You could not go on the altar of fasting for 40 days. You could not go on the altar of fasting for one year. There was a time I discovered my life was in a cycle. And in 2012, the Holy Ghost advised me. He said, if you want to fulfill this destiny, better leave food alone. The greatest of us fail, either by food or by our attraction to the opposite sex. You don't leave it, you become nothing. And from 2012 to 2017, I fasted every day from morning to night. Five years before the fasting was over, I exploded. I exploded. See, there is something on your inside that the world can't contain. He said he has put eternity in our hearts. But that eternity must erupt in order to swallow the, swallow the world. And today, you have to refuse not to move around the world. You are on high demand. People say, even if it's one day, come. I'm leaving for Ghana on Tuesday. On Friday, I'm leaving for Manchester. I return from Manchester to Zambia. I return to Anambra State. I return to Lagos. As, I leave, as I'm leaving on Tuesday, I will return until April 10th. And if I leave on April 14th, I will return until April 24th. And that cycle can continue. What am I saying? I'm not preaching anything that has not been preached. But there's a power that men can resist. When they hear you, they can't stop. They cannot, but they want to touch you. There's a power. There's a power. It's not about doing things new. It's not about doing a new thing. It's about coming fresh and coming with power. There's a power called anakazo. It compels men. A thousand men can preach, but when you talk, your voice is like a sting. They can hear you. Even when they go to sleep, they can't sleep. In their dream, the voice is echoing. And God will deliberately put honor on your voice. And when you are talking, a man will sleep and encounter God. What is happening is a power. You can start a pure water business, but start it with power. And see what happens. It's not, see, when, this, when a spirit wants to manifest his excellency, he will get you to do something common. Something common. And a man selling pure water can be a millionaire. A man selling silk pass can be a millionaire. A man doing what you consider. Somebody can be selling food and build an estate. And you are wondering what is happening. You are just there selling food. But the senator wants to eat that food. You are selling food. The governor wants to eat that food. And people are wondering what is she putting inside. It's not about what is putting inside. It's the power with which she's doing it. It's the power. When the power comes, the word submits to you. I prophesy over someone. As we engage in this fasting week, you will step into a power that compels.
can make for power. You can be 17 years old and change your world. David caught a power at the age of 14 and he defeated Goliath. At 14, David was a national phenomenon. At 14, he had touched so much power that a point came. At 14, a nation was sinking and they said, Saul killed a thousand, but David killed 10,000. How can you compare a 14 year old boy with a king? A king controls the economy of the nation. A king controls the security system of the nation. How can a 14 year old be compared to a king? There's a power. There's a power. That power will not only make you conquer, it will also position you correctly. That you will do one thing and that thing will be so amplified that a whole nation, a whole nation will gather around you. I prophesy over someone, the power to rule, the power to conquer, and the power to reign, receive it now. conversation how in a time where women are not even considered as part of the nobles to legislate over their affairs how can that time when women are most disadvantaged a nation depends on a woman and the woman delivers that nation because of power a point came the bible said those were the days of Deborah the days in a time when women are not considered a woman steps into a dimension of power and she was called the mother of Israel Deborah was a judge those were supposed to be the times of Shamgar but they failed and somebody entered power a day where there was so much oppression the Bible said men didn't walk on highways they looked for bush path to walk because there was besiegement there was intimidation. There was terrorism. But a woman rose up and said, even when men fail, women can rise. Because it's not about gender. It's about power. It's not about sex. It's about power. It's not about age. It's about power. It's about power. And the woman delivered the nation. I prophesy over you. You will become the answer to your generation. You become the answer to your generation. You become the answer to your nation. You become the answer to your generation. See, when you touch certain powers, it doesn't matter what your enemies do. You know what to do. The Bible said in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 3, five nations, three nations, ganged up against Jehoshaphat, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. They dominated him with military might, they had superior strategy. They had advantage on account of topography. The guy was outrightly disadvantaged, but he knew the place of fasting. He said he called for a national fast. And while they were fasting, God spoke. And he said, you don't need to fight in this battle. See, there is a power you enter that you don't have to fight. God fights your battles. You don't need to fight. He said, get the singers. Celebrate into war. How can you go into battle celebrating? And when they entered, the nations turned against themselves, destroyed themselves. They came to collect his voice. The place that was designed to be your grave, you will be enthroned there. Where men can't up against you, you will rule there. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
changing now somebody's story is changing I sense an anointing for a lifting there's an anointing for lifting there's an anointing for lifting the power that holds men down is about to break from somebody's life right now as I speak I release the rod of the world I release the sword of the spirit wherever you are that power that has held you down for months and for years I command them to shatter father thank you father thank you father thank you father thank you father my god my god somebody has a terminal disease you are doing well you look flamboyant but you are dying on the inside there's a terminal infection in the heart and the lord is telling me now you are receiving a brand new heart a brand new heart Jesus and everyone with terminal infirmities of the lungs, of the kidney, of the liver, of the blood, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands toward heaven. I would have shared on this, but we are out of time. When you fast, you break into the river of inspiration and that inspiration brings abundance Isaiah 50, 58 verse 6 when he said this is the fast I called for in verse 8 he said then 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 shall your morning break forth your light break forth like the morning and your health shall spring forth speedily and he said your righteousness shall go before thee and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward 
and in verse 11 go to verse 11 quickly verse 11 and verse 12 and he said the Lord shall guide thee continually and steadfastly and thy soul in drought he shall guide thy soul in drought and he shall make thy bones and thou shall be like a water garden and shall be like the spring of water whose waters fail not and in verse 12 he said you shall rebuild the waste cities lift your hands towards heaven the inspiration that enthrones the inspiration that causes a man to break forth into inspiration and to develop the power to build the west cities in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I release you into that inspiration. Step into that ever end, no, never ending river. Step into that river that never ends in the name of Jesus. Somebody will leave this place while you are sleeping, you will have inspiration. Yeah. 